A multiple state evaporator concentrate a weak sodium hydroxide solution from 3% to 18% and processes 2 tons of feed solution per day. It's asking how much produce is made per day and how much water is evaporated per day. From this sentence, we can find out the basis. It's 2 tons of feed solution, in this case it's sodium hydroxide solution. That is step 1, find the basis. Step 2, draw the flow chart. We can use box to represent the process unit. In this case, it's evaporator. And use arrows to find, uh, to differentiate the flow direction. Flow in and flow out. Input that is the sodium hydroxide solution and it's given the mass flow rate. Let's use um, M sub zero is two tons per day. And the mass fraction has 3%, so mass fraction for solar hydroxide is 0 0.03. The balance is border. And the output, there's water coming out. There is sodium hydroxide solution and it's looking to concentrate to 18%. Let's use symbol M sub 1 to represent the mass flow rate for water and M sub 2 to represent the mass flow rate for sodium hydroxide in the output stream. In the output stream, the mass fraction for sodium hydroxide is 0.18 and the balance is water. And draw the system boundary. System boundary allow us to see whether there is any mass flow in and flow out of the system. In this way we can determine whether it is batch process or a continuous process. Step 3. Express the problem statement in terms of label variable. In this problem, given uh, the sodium hydroxide solution in the fresh feed is 2 tons per day with mass fraction 0 0.03 for sodium hydroxide and 0 0.97 for water in the fresh feed. In the output stream, we use N.2 to represent the uh, the mass flow rate for sodium hydroxide solution and in that one to represent the mass flow rate of water per day and the mass fraction for sodium hydroxide in the output stream is 0.18 and water is 0.82 so using material balance we can solve the material of the of the species in the output stream. Step 4, unit consistency. In this case, we have the units which is 2 uh, ton per day. So here we can write down ton per day for our unit to make sure they are consistent. Step 5, round the degree of freedom. 
the graph region is equal to the number of unknown minus the number of independent equation. In this case, there are two unknown. This is unknown and this is unknown. And there are two species, sodium hydroxide and water, which means there are two equations. So minus two, then we get zero, which means the problem is solvable. If the degree of freedom is zero, then go ahead and solve the problem. Now we can solve the problem with material balance. Before you actually do the problem solving, make sure you write on your assumption. I remember in my first exam, I solved the problem in the right way and I got, uh, I got the right answer but I didn't write down assumptions so I get five points off. So make sure you write down your assumption in this way people know what you are thinking. How to how do you think to solve this problem? In this problem we can assume because in the system boundary we show there is mass flow in and mass flow out. So we can assume that it's a continuous process. And like I say in this book most problem is steady state unless it's steady, it's non-steady. Otherwise, we can assume a steady state. So we know that the mass flow in in the steady, uh, steady rate and flow out the steady rate. And we can also assume because in this case it's just um, the process units is evaporator. So basically the water is evaporating. Then there is no no reaction. If there's no reaction, in this case we can use the non-reactive process to write down the material balance. Now we can write a material balance based on the non-reactive species, steady state, continuous process. Like I say, M dot is the mass flow rate, which is the change in mass per unit time. So dm over dt and we use let's use um, m dot input to represent the mass flow rate of input for a non-reactive species input is equal to output then which means that you apply on each species in this problem because there's no reaction. For sodium hydroxide species balance, input is equal to output. Then the input of sodium hydroxide is 2 ton per day and in this two ton solution, there is 0 0.03 sodium hydroxide. This is the input of sodium hydroxide. And in the output stream, we don't know the mass flow rate of sodium hydroxide in the output stream, but we have M2. So go ahead, write down whatever you, you assign for the variable. And the mass fraction is 0.18. From here, you can solve for m dot two. Next, we have water balance.
and water balance is the same thing. Input is output because there's no reaction. And the input of water is 2 times per day times the mass fraction is 0.97. And the output is m.2 times the mass fraction is 0.82 because what is solved for m2 and there is evaporation of water which is m.1 then you can solve m.1 substitute the m.2 to here then you can solve for m.1 Now we can go ahead and double check for the material balance. In the input stream, uh, the sodium hydroxide is 2 times per day times 0 0.03, and output stream at 0 0.333, this is what we found out, times the mass fraction is 0.18. So on the left we have 0 0.06, on the right it's 0 0.06. So it's balanced out. And do the same thing on water, just to double check if they are balanced. And step A, solve the additional equation for the rest of the unknown. In this problem, there's only two unknown. We solve them all. Step 9, check the scale. In this problem, there's no scale. So we finish the whole process.